Welcome back. This afternoon, there is new data on COVID long hauler syndrome to an antiviral drug being more widely available at testing sites. We are following some new developments in the coronavirus pandemic. We are now joined live by Dr. Jeff Potoff from UW Health. Dr. Jeff, of course, we appreciate you joining us. I first want to start by asking where things are as far as cases, because we do know that Milwaukee County is still in the high transmission category, which sounds uh, not so good, but the county though is seeing fewer cases than it had last week, which does sound kind of good. So where are things now and how much longer do you think we could be in that high transmission category there? Yeah, I think that's a good question. As we look across the state of Wisconsin, even Milwaukee County, what we're seeing right now is a bit of a leveling off of cases. Now, hard to know if that will continue, if we'll see a downward trend in cases or if it'll go back up a little bit. Uh, every Thursday, the CDC will update uh, that community transmission uh, rating for, for each county. Right now, Milwaukee County in the red. Uh, it would be great to see next Thursday if cases come down, if hospitals have capacity dropping back into that yellow uh, and hopefully some point uh, into the green. Uh, but right now, for the most part, cases are leveling off a little bit. That's that's I'll take that news. Uh, speaking of updating, the state's DHS website recently updated their data with uh, booster doses. I was looking before I came out here. I think it was right at about three million people have received that booster dose. I want to know how much of a difference uh, that makes. And also the question, and I've asked you this before, when do you think people under 50 will be able to get that booster dose? Yeah, you know, I think the data is pretty clear as far as if you're vaccinated with two doses and then you go on to get that booster dose, uh, your protection, at least initially against any symptoms at all, is decent. It's about 80 percent. That starts to wane uh, in the three to four months afterwards. But what doesn't wane is your protection against severe disease. Uh, and we see that in that data where you can see that, you know, cases don't necessarily outstrip between uh, those who are boosted uh, and not. Uh, but certainly severe disease hospitalizations do. Uh, when we look at second boosters, there's really good data for those 65 and older, those who have immunocompromising conditions. Uh, what I think we'll see is at that June 15th meeting at the FDA, where they'll also look at those uh, vaccines for young children, they may also look at a vaccination strategy for the rest of the country, really addressing that question of who uh, 50 and, and older or, or younger than 50 uh, should be getting vaccinated and when. Uh, I anticipate they'll have guidance for boosters sometimes as uh, maybe uh, corresponding with our typical flu vaccine. And we know the White House recently announced it's making the antiviral treatment Paxlovid more accessible. We're hearing about this a lot more lately. Can you explain what this drug does and who it's intended for exactly? Yeah, I feel like Paxlovid kind of flew under the radar. It's actually a pretty effective antiviral drug, so it interrupts the virus's ability to replicate itself. Uh, now, the studies uh, where we learned about this drug looked at people uh, who were unvaccinated. They had features that would make them higher risk for severe COVID. Maybe they're immunocompromised. Maybe they had uh, comorbid conditions like diabetes or, or some sort of underlying lung problem. Uh, and if they were diagnosed with COVID and could start Paxlovid within five days of that diagnosis, it would reduce their likelihood of being admitted to the hospital, uh, having severe disease by close to 80%, which is pretty impressive. So certainly uh, for those individuals uh, who are at higher risk of having severe disease, uh, talking to your doctor about whether or not you qualify for Paxlovid, which is fairly available in the community right now, is a really good idea. And yeah, we wanted to touch a little bit on uh, COVID long haulers. A new CDC study shows like one in five adults might have some form of long haul. I think for some people it's worse than the actual COVID that they right. went through. So what are some of the common symptoms and what are patients dealing with? Yeah, these symptoms really vary from fairly mild uh, to, you know, somewhat disabling. I think uh, I know folks who've had COVID, you know, over a year ago, they still don't have back their sense of taste and smell. Uh, that can actually be a pretty big deal. Uh, brain fog is a common one. Uh, and then fatigue, I'd say that's probably one of the more common ones where people after having COVID doesn't even need to be severe disease. Uh, they just don't get that energy back and it goes on for months and months. Uh, I think this is an area of study that medicine will have to look at for the next couple of years to find out, you know, what is this long haul? How long does it last, uh, who's all going to come down with it? All right, Dr. Jeff Potta from UW Health. We appreciate you being with us as always here on Tuesdays. We'll see you next week. And a reminder for all of you out there, you can always find the latest information on the pandemic, including where you can get a booster shot at tmj4.com slash coronavirus.